Welcome. If you have just joined us, this is the channel where we get excited about love, names, words, numbers, numerology to be precise. I am very elated about um, the revelation, revelations that are transpiring, hence the word revelation. And um, it's just so beautiful. So um, I just want to explore um, words that have been popping at me in relation to the number 10, which um, corresponds to the word sacrifice as our template, which equals number 46, 4 and 6, 10. And I just want to do a, a further exploration on Satan. So... On Satan, which equals um, 10 directly with no um, modifications, of course, would also equal the number one. We see that, hence we say that um, man, the word man, M-A-N, also equals 10, 4, 1, and 5, it's 10. So I'm trying to make sense or really see, is Satan that external entity that we tend to think that makes us do things or is Satan part of our psyche? What is his function? How does he transpire in our makeup? What happens um, that we are looking at um, this entity of um, Satan as this evil um, entity we have, we want nothing to do with. Yet, we also have heaven, the word heaven, H-E-A-V-E-N, although it's a different um, number, but it comes to seven, and that equals 10. So we have those numbers, which equals 10. Is there no relation? Is there one ten one place and not another? What is ten? So this is what I'm exploring and I feel that it's going to take a series of presentations to really get to the core of number ten. Number ten down in street. <laughs> Just came to mind. Okay, number ten, number ten. Right. So the, the story that um, has come to light that has been niggling me is the story of Job and it was said that God said unto Satan number 10 have you considered my servant Job but what we have not taken into consideration is Job is really one six <coughs> excuse me and two one plus six plus two equals nine now this is the letter that i have been very curious about in this sense but let's stick to job in fact, it would be interesting to see how Job is really written, um, just to go through that um, historical. Okay, so we have Job. Let's, take, let's keep it simple for now. Job is nine. If he had this name, it would mean that he already has within him every construct that equals nine, naturally. So... Your name really tells a lot about you. But we see that the numbers come from one to six, and then it goes to two. Now, here's where I think it gets very interesting. Satan, as we see here, S-A-T-A-N, let's put his numerical value down here is one, one, two, one, and five. 
1, 1, 2, 1, and 5. Now, if we learn well, God said to Adam, God is it, God is it, God said to, not Adam, to Satan, God said to Satan, you can do as you please, but do not stretch your hand, do not strike him, how does it go? Do not stretch forth your hand, meaning do not touch him with your hand. Okay, so the word hand, H-A-N-D, the word hand equals nine. I have done this. That is eight, nine, and five, um, 14, and and 14 and 4 is 18 so 1 and 8 is 9 so do not stretch your hand meaning this is giving the indication that satan has a hand yes but he was only allowed to go so far with his hand okay he was not to stretch his hand he was not to stretch his hand, meaning when we see the word Satan, Satan is from 1 to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five letters to the name Satan, which corresponds to where this new place is, where that newness, where we experience that new spirit in Christ, that new born again that new element, that new era, that new job, that new whatever it is that we are experiencing. So we see that Satan was only allowed. That was the agreement. Now, if you recall, I have always been talking about two is agreement. But there's also we two ones here. Now, that is also interesting. Let's just stick to this for now. And I love this number 15 here too, because considering it's a six there, but we'll um, just keep this simple. So, Satan was not to stretch his hand, meaning he could only go as far as five. And so, whatever that was happening here already because it's evident that Job had that agreement or signature or whatever it is we get here in his wonderful days of, um, of prosperity where he was very rich and doing quite well. There was that number two, that, that number two was that agreement there with Job. He was a man of one to six. He had been the fox. This is where we get challenged in making decisions or, or having discernment to make the right decisions or whatever or not have <laughs> right decisions. But by the time we are going back here to this place, this place here is no longer new. It is a path that we had gone back if we decide to just go back here because there we probably get a confuse. Um, of course, if it were confused, it's a new state as well. Okay, but we have the number six here reminding us that we are man in God's image and likeness, made in God's image and likeness. We are truth which is um, 24 to 14 is 6 equaling. So we, are in, we have that element of truth reflecting here. So basically that game that God and Satan had, <laughs> it's really just so funny. And this is the game we are really 
in <laughs> so it's just really amazing okay so the game of um, God and Satan was that Satan was not to stretch he was not to go beyond number five which his name ends on the letter N which is five so of course when this is why it is said when you are a new creature in Christ people will tell you this is when they get all kinds of temptations this is when they feel more challenged they think okay I have just been um, a born-again Christians a Christian but I didn't realize that I have all those um, temptations and all those sins were before me and all those habits I need to change and all this transformation that um, is requiring of me so it is that state of realization it's that state of abundance of all that you are you are in recognition of it in fact I was um, relishing in the number five <laughs> which I still am but of course it's bringing home um, the reality that you can go either left or right it is really a state of where you go left or right and this is what Satan was about really tempting poor Job and Job of course when he got to this fox um, stage um, was really um, of course it doesn't show that he actually went through that path yet it's as if he revert back to number one it's like showing he went back to number one and to make that um, because he often of course in the story oh I had so many cattle I have I've done so many things um, I was so rich I was prosperous I was healthy and all those things that he recounted he was really um, taking into account what he was and wondering this is where he was wondering well did I eat too much did I um, you know was I too greedy was there something I did wrong and it is in that state which is also reflecting I love it with um, revelation here the um, E reflecting that which is where Satan comes in Satan is reflected here again to show he's showing the word revelation is our key it is showing that Satan in correspondence with the end is taunting um, Job it's taunting Job which starts with one one Job starts with one so he goes back with one and he is really addressing his whole life he's addressing his decisions he's addressing and he's wondering was it luck was it was it um, something I did or was I lucky to have been there what development needs taking place and remember that as we have discussed because God said to Satan do not stretch your hand in this point here in this axle here is nine we have done this on north south east and west and we have showed how the number nine all the way also is embedded in this four that we see on the surface mm, 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 mm. isn't that delicious isn't that delicious so wow mm. so basically of course we see the other key factor here is that the letter R also represents nine which corresponds to the word hand 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 is this is where Satan had his hand here he was playing luck he was really trying his luck here of course with the T hair that T representing he was present in all of this present in this stage and we see how 
of course, Satan here has in a relation with the basket of bread or whatever was taken here with the name Job. J is one. S is one. So we see the interplay of that which happened here. And hence, from the start, Satan would never have really won that race because the sacrifice, the sacrifice was already impregnated in Job. The only thing as well is that because we have two hands, each hand equals nine, that means Satan didn't have, didn't stand a chance. <laughs> he was not to stretch his hand. And so it meant that Job would always have a chance because he was in six, he was a fox, he could always have a way of stretching his hand to that becoming that nine. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation. I hope you have found it beneficial. Oh, I have found it quite delicious. And the secrets are in the numbers. And I am endeavoring to discover the mysteries of the numbers. So number 10, this is where we at. And of course, we see that Job being number nine, and number, well, the word Job equals nine. Let's just summarize this. The word Job equals nine. I have showed how nine is an interplay with one and eight or one and zero and, and nine. So this is the interplay that happens there. God, of course, equaling eight with his servant Job who started with one because God, you could say, was the parent and um, Job was the child, of course. So, of course, eight is, is a circle that really is overlapped here. But there's the zero and Job being one, Job is one. So we have ten. Yes, <laughs> we have ten here when there is the separateness. But also, before there was that separateness, this is what Job, this is the, the mother and child. The child is crying, the mother is there, you know, um, feeding, comforting, and really trying to help that transition of what we can see as the polarities. And so the question is, is Satan as bad as we make him out to be? Is Satan an external um, entity that hunts us? And um, I'll just leave you with that thought. Perhaps we'll do another um, presentation on that. And I just want to acknowledge the elders that have guided me through these um, presentations. And um, of course, they are presence, um, faith, endurance, unity, forgiveness, conviction. And um, have I said endurance? And um, of course, I'm sure the elders will understand. So I'm, I'm thankful um, that you have um, taken the time to watch this um, presentation. So if you like this presentation or you found it beneficial, click the like button and share because this is how we do it. We share to actualize in self-love. So. In the meantime, stay blessed, stay bright, and stay ignited. Namaste.